Hello and welcome to our series on Ireland's native trees. In this episode, we'll be talking about these wonderful trees, the common ash. Common ash trees are one of Ireland's bigger trees that can tend to dominate a woodland or dominate a habitat. We've got oak, we've got ash, and we've got elm are our really big dominant trees that can live for a very long time and grow into huge specimens. These ash trees behind me here are pretty big, I'd say at least 100 years old, but these trees could grow potentially to 30 or even 40 meters tall. They are huge trees, and a huge amount of wood, a huge amount of carbon stored inside them. The common ash tree likes to have reasonably well fertilized and reasonably well drained soils. So in the likes of this field here at the edge is the place where they love, and you can see these trees above me are very happy. They'll drink a huge amount of water, their roots spreading out as far as their big branches, dominating this whole area. But they're also a sympathetic tree, sympathetic to other native plants and very sympathetic to animals that will use them for shelter, for food and for so much more. So to identify common ash, you have to look at the leaves and of course feel the leaves. The leaves feel smooth, but they're very big. Each leaf has a number of individual leaflets on it. It will have one at the very end and then pairs of leaflets that are opposite each other, spreading out all the way down the leaflet. And they will have a little bit of a serration along the edge. Now a tree this can be mixed up with is rowan or mountain ash. But rowan or mountain ash really is quite different. It also has its pairs, but each pair is smaller and the serrations uh, are much deeper. And of course the rowan or mountain ash can't grow anywhere near as big as these big, strong, dominant common ash trees. Another nice way to identify them is the little black buds. They're the only common tree that we have in Ireland that has black buds, a velvety or matte black that's on them. It makes them very easy to spot in the winter time. Quite often, as you can see perhaps in the profile of this tree, quite often as the branches droop down, they will sometimes take a little turn up. And on top of that turn up, at the end of each one, is the little bud. And already in that bud is next year's leaves being built and being protected by it. And they will sit in there quite happily all winter long, waiting for next spring. So there's a saying that you will often hear about ash and about oak trees that if the ash come out before the oak, we're in for a soak. Whereas if the oak come out before the ash, we're in for a splash. Now, no matter what, in this Northwest region, we tend to be in for a lot of soaks or a lot of, a lot of rain. But pretty much always, the ash comes out after the oak. So the oak is one of the last trees to come out and comes out, tends the leaves tend to burst out of their buds early in May. Whereas the ash tree and the aspen tree are our native trees that will hold on and they'll wait right into the middle of May before bursting up their, up in their, their buds, certainly up in the northwest region of the country. And as a result, they give all the flowers and the grasses that are underneath a great chance to get lots of energy from the sun. All the woodland flowers that are trying to come out in March and April to beat, to beat the trees that are around them. Before the canopy gets closed off, all the light gets shut out by the trees. The ash are sympathetic like that. So they're coming out that bit later, giving the flowers, the woodland flowers underneath, a bit more of an opportunity. And then even when the leaves do come out, with all of these little leaflets, quite a lot of dappled light falls down onto the forest floor. And again, helps the area remain very diverse and fertile which in turn feeds lots of insects and spiders and other characters. Another way to help identify the ash trees is by the bark. They have a beautiful gray bark, very smooth when the tree is younger or very smooth on the newer limbs, often covered in dark patches, but the dark patches will be lichens. Lichens, and you can see here, there's mosses growing as well. And this tree, as it's getting older, is starting to produce these fissures or cracks up along the bark much in the way that oak does. And very old, very mature ash trees will have very, very deep cracks running all the way up along the main trunk and the biggest limbs. And of course, in these cracks, there are lots of little bugs that are living. 
in the older ash trees and you get lots of beetles that live and then of course you get lots of other characters that are preying on them. Ash supports a lot of insect life which is the basis for so much of our nature. Ash support a lot of biodiversity. Ash trees and the wood have been very valuable um, throughout the ages and are still used an awful lot today. Famously of course the ash tree is used or the wood from the ash tree is used to make the hurleys. But they're used for all sorts of different tools and equipment because one of the main reasons, well their strength of course as well, it's reasonably easy to work with but as well as that it has shock absorbing uh, properties. So if you have a handle of a pickaxe or a hammer and it's made out of ash you won't feel the jolt coming up it so well. Um, and the same applies for the hurley. It's uh, the clash of the ash, the hurleys clash together and um, you won't have such a jarring feeling coming up your arms. So it's a very useful wood. It's been used throughout the ages in all sorts of different manners. They were also a tree that were revered um, right through the ages. They were often planted outside sites of importance, sacred sites. And you see, still see them quite often in and around monasteries today. Um, people all throughout the ages in Ireland have revered the ash tree. Their leaves were used as winter fodder for animals and of course the wood had so many uses as well. Ash trees have both male and female parts and their flowers come out, little kind of purple clusters and they come out before the leaves do. So they'll come out around about April time or so and they're pollinated by the wind so they don't need insects for that. And then the female flowers that are pollinated will turn into these what's called ash keys. These ash keys are little seeds, they have a wing and at the end they have a little seed on them. And these will hang on like a bunch of keys. You can see some of them are still maturing here, some are, are nearly ready. And they'll hang on like a little bunch of keys even after the leaves have fallen. So they're another way of helping you spot the ash tree in the winter time along with the black buds that they have. And then they will drop these little seeds. A lot of them will get gobbled up by birds, providing uh, an important source of food in the winter time. Um, but the ones that don't then will start to grow and they'll take very very easily. It's easy to grow ash trees. They're a tree that will take over an area quite quickly if they're allowed. But ash has a problem. Ash is in trouble. Despite it being such a common tree all over Ireland and one of the most common trees in the hedgerows, ash trees are suffering from ash dieback. An ash dieback is called by a type of fungus that was first discovered in 2012 in Ireland and in Britain and in Ireland in fact but it's been known about in continental Europe for around about 30 years and the spores of the fungus they can travel for miles and miles and then when they land onto the on the leaves of the trees and they start to attack the trees and the leaves start to wither a bit like you're seeing some of these withering here and they will start to wither and eventually fall little by little it won't kill the tree in the first year but in time it will eventually kill off the whole tree or at least most of it. The more mature trees seem to do a little bit better. The younger trees, trees and plantations seem to be particularly vulnerable to ash dieback disease. It's a sad thing and it's something that is going to change our landscape. We're not going to have as many ash around. However, we shouldn't give up on them. You should try and plant some ash trees if you have any space available but make sure they come from native stock because some trees, it seems, seem to have a resistance to this disease, at least be able to fight it off to a certain extent. And those trees will be the ones that will survive and hopefully become the ash of the future. And remember, one of these trees can live for maybe 300 years if it's given its chance and if it has a resistance to that disease. So plant as many ash as you can. Don't give up on them. They're very beautiful and it might be you that's finding the one that has the true resistance to the ash dieback.